Hi there. In this video, I'll show you how you can use the Wi-Fi adapter that is on board the Pico 2W with MicroPython. I'll demonstrate how you can scan for Wi-Fi networks and then how to set the Pico 2W to connect to a Wi-Fi network and then send a HTTPS request to Google and return the status code back. Now, let's start by looking at what's needed for this project. Okay, so other than a computer, you'll need a Pico 2W, which has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, a USB-A or USB-C to micro B cable, a Wi-Fi network that supports Wi-Fi 4, also known as 802.11n, micro Python installed on the Pico 2W, Python installed on your local computer, and finally, Visual Studio Code with the Python and Raspberry Pi Pico extensions installed. Now, before we get started with the programs, let's have a look at some of the features that the Wi-Fi model of the Pico 2 offers. Let's just quickly highlight some of the features of the Pico 2W's Wi-Fi capabilities. The Wi-Fi chipset is an Infineon CYW43439 that provides Wi-Fi 4, also known as 802.11n, single band at 2.4 GHz, WPA3 encryption, soft AP for up to four clients, so it can be used as an access point for up to four devices, Bluetooth 5.2 with support for Bluetooth LE. There are no external antennas as they're built into the Pico 2W. With that covered, let's move on to building the first program that will scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks. Okay, to begin with, connect your Pico 2W to your computer. Next, open VS Code and then click on the Raspberry Pi Pico extension and select New MicroPython Project. Give the project a name and then specify a location to save it to. Everything else you can leave as is and then just click on the create button. Now a new window might appear or it might just use the existing one, depends on your implementation. But once the files appear, just rename blink to Wi-Fi underscore scan. The existing code that's in that file is not needed. And now I'll just paste in the code to use for the Wi-Fi scanner. So let's go over what this code does. First, we've got the libraries at the top that need to be imported. First up, we've got bin ASCII and that's used to convert some values from binary to other formats later on. The network library is for working with the Wi-Fi module, and the RP2 library is specific to the RP2040 and the RP2350 microcontrollers and provides additional functionality to MicroPython for those two microcontrollers. Then we've got a new function called main, which contains the program. The expected return for this function is none. Then we've got a doc string that just quickly summarizes what the function does. So we'll scroll down and get to the actual code. First, you'll need to specify the country your Pico 2W is in. In my case, I'm in the UK, so it will be GB. If this isn't set, a default safe setting is applied, but that can cause issue with Wi-Fi connections, as some channels may not be available in certain countries. Next, we'll create a Wi-Fi client. When setting this up, it can be set up as either a client, network.sta underscore IF, or as an access point, network.if underscore AP. As it will be a client, network.sta underscore IF will be used. Then activate the interface. With the interface now active, the next step is to scan for Wi-Fi networks using wlan.scan, the results of which will be stored in the discovered underscore networks variable as a list of tuples. As for the contents of one of the tuples, here's an example. So on the screen, I've got an example of what a response would look like for a single tuple from the Wi-Fi scan. So the first part will be the name of the Wi-Fi network or the SSID. Uh, this will be stored in a binary slash byte notation, but you can actually see what the Wi-Fi name is. Next to that in black, we've got the MAC address of the Wi-Fi access point in binary again. After that in blue, we've got the channel number. In the pinkish color, we've got the RSSI or signal strength. There's a link in the description to indicate what the actual meaning of that number is but minus 71, if I remember correctly, is good enough for email. The number five in green is the security. Now there are 10 of these. However, though numbers five to nine are actually undocumented on MicroPython. So we don't know if these are actually true or not, but I did find a GitHub issue that actually had a similar thing to this. And they seem to manage to find a little bit of source code in one of the C headers that indicated that's what the additional ones from five to nine actually indicate. Whether that's actually accurate or not to be determined, but when I did a Wi-Fi scan of my iPhone, it came up as five. 
on MicroPython it lists only up to four. Lastly, in purple, this indicates if the Wi-Fi is hidden or not. For MicroPython, it usually lists zero as visible and one as hidden. However though, on the Pico 2W, it can actually show as four or five, but nobody seems to know what those numbers mean. The assumption is probably four means visible and five means hidden. But again, that's purely speculation. And I'm just guessing at that point. When I did a discovery of my access point, it showed up as four. That access point wasn't set to hidden. So again, this is just an assumption. Continuing on with the code, we'll then print the list of discovered networks in the terminal. Following on from that, as it's just a list of tuples, let's make it a little bit cleaner. And also let's convert the MAC address from binary to hexadecimal. To do this, I have a new variable called Wi-Fi networks with an empty list. Then there's a for loop that will go over the discovered underscore networks list. And for each network, create a dictionary with a key indicating what each item is for. For the SSID field, it will decode the binary representation of the network name to text. A similar thing will happen to the AP-MAC address, but it will need to be represented as a hexadecimal number for each part. Finally, in the for loop, I'll do the same again, but this will just print out each of the results on a single line instead. Lastly, for the main function, print out the list of dictionaries stored in the Wi-Fi underscore networks variable. And finally, for this program, run the main function if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Just going to save that file and then I'm going to run it. And we can see two empty lists because I haven't got any Wi-Fi networks active where I am. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn one on. So I've got an active network now. So I'm just going to right click, run current file in Pico. And we should pick one network up. And there we go. So we've got the initial representation of what it looks like. Then I've got a slightly modified version of that. And then we've got a list of dictionaries. In this case, there's only one dictionary in each with individual key value pairs, just to give you an indication of what each value is. Now, let's move on to setting up Pico2W to connect to a Wi-Fi network and make it actually do something. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new file. I'm gonna call that Wi-Fi underscore connection dot py, and then I'll just pop the code in for it. Now, let's go over what this actually does. So first up, there's the libraries to import again. This time we're adding a couple of additional ones. So we've got time and then we've got your requests. Your uh, request is a version of the request library, but has less APIs available. And it also fixes some unoptimized aspects that could potentially cause issues with a device like a Pico 2W, especially considering the amount of memory that's got. After that, we've got a main function followed by a doc string summary. Next, we've got a country code again getting set. Then we've got two variables for our SSID. So this will be the name of the network and then PSK, which is your password. I've got two sample ones in here. So I've got test and test. Those won't work. That's deliberate. I'm just going to show you what happens when it fails to connect to the network. Then we'll create a new Wi-Fi client interface. The wlan.config line is used to disable the low power mode on the Wi-Fi adapter. The main reason for this is if you're having problems with your Wi-Fi connections, this might actually help a little bit. Your mileage may vary basically with that. Then we'll activate the interface and then we'll try to connect to the network. We'll set a counter for our max weight. After that, we've got a while loop that will check the connection status every second up to 10. If the connection is less than zero or equal to or greater than three, it will break the loop. Otherwise, it'll keep trying. Usually, if it's less than zero, then it's an error. One and two are usually connected status, and three is connected. Following on from that, if the connection is not equal to three, what will then happen is the Wi-Fi interface will disconnect. It will then become disabled, and then it'll chuck a runtime error up, indicating that the connection to the Wi-Fi network has failed. Otherwise, it will then show it's connected to the Wi-Fi network, and then print out the details of the interface. So in this case, we've got the IP address, subnet mask, gateway IP, and DNS server. After that, we'll send a request over to the Google homepage. And then once it's come back, we'll just print out the status code. Now, if it's 200, we're good to go. If it's not, then we've got problems. It will then get the date from the header from the request. And it will also do the similar thing for the content dash type. Uh, that should come back as HTML. And then it'll close the response. 
then disconnect the Wi-Fi, and then deactivate the Wi-Fi, and that's it for that main function. And then the last part is just basically to run the main function. So I'll save that and run it. Now this should fail because I've got a, a dummy network in there. So this is just going to give you an example of what it looks like. There we go. You see status one, so it's attempting connection. Status minus two, it's failed. Then we've got a break status of minus two. That's fine. And then we've got our runtime error indicating the connection to the Wi-Fi network named test has failed. And as I said before, that's deliberate. I just wanted to show you what would happen when it doesn't establish a connection. Now, I've just added my SSID and password off screen to those two variables, replacing test and test. I'll save that and then I'll run it again. I'll just bring that up a little bit. There we go. We can see it's attempting to connect to the Wi-Fi network named iPhone. Took it about three attempts. Then we've got a status code of three. We've got to break that loop of status code three. You know, an indication to say it's connected to Wi-Fi network iPhone. And then we've got the IP details, 200, which is the status code for connected to Google. And then the date, time, and then the content type. And that's it. A couple of simple programs to get you started using the Wi-Fi on a Pico 2W. If you'd like a copy of the code, it's available on GitHub using the link in the description. And with that said, that concludes this project. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Pico and Raspberry Pi content, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. There is a playlist on the left for more Pico content, and on the right is another video you might like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.